Hello everyone, my name is Kay Stuckworth. I am a career specialist at the East Baton Rouge Public Library. Today I'm going to show you how to create a Gmail account for applying to jobs. Um, most jobs nowadays require you to have an email account so you can go through their online application uh, form. Uh, so we're going to show you how to do that today. Um, now gmail.com is one of many free email providers. Uh, there's also zoho.com, hotmail.com, uh, yahoo.com, uh, there's some other ones as well. Uh, those are the ones that came to me right now. Um, but you could also just do a search for free email provider and probably find a couple. Um, we're going to show you Gmail today because it's what we show our patrons at the Career Center in the, East, in the public library. Um, because it's easy. Uh, to sign up. It's free, like I said, and it also has some other stuff in there too. Um, but so I'm going to show you how to do that. So first we're going to open up our web browser and we're going to go to the address bar. It's up here at the top. It's where you type in the web address you'd like to go to. In our case, we're going to gmail.com. So, and it shows us a landing page. Um, so for that, you know, this is kind of just their marketing spiel. Uh, for doing stuff with Gmail, but we just want to create an account. So we're going to click there. And it's going to ask you for your first and last name, what username you'd like, and a password. So you can think of your email, uh, it's actually short for electronic mail, and uh, you can think of it as uh, basically the electronic version of mail like that you get from the Postal Service in your mailbox. Um, so your username is going to be kind of like your street address uh, and then the gmail.com that's called the host part um, that's basically like the city that you're in um, and so uh, basically someone sends you an email they type in your address and uh, they hit send or they type up their email they hit send and then you get it in your uh, inbox which is like your mailbox and then you can read it you can respond to them by writing them an email back. You can forward it on to someone else if you want them to see it. You can uh, trash it. You can file it away somewhere. You can print it out. You can do whatever you want with it because it is yours. And a password is kind of like a key to the door of your house. Um, except for, you know, obviously it's, it's not a physical key. So you have to be a little more safe with it. You have to um, make it secure and stuff like that. So... I'll get to that in just a moment, but first let's just type in our first and last name. Uh, for us, we are making up a person. Her name is Jenny Public. And now the username part, like I said, this needs to be, it needs to be unique in gmail.com. And since we're looking for a job, it needs to be professional. Uh, something like Darth, uh, Darth Skater uh, 29 is probably not very professional. Uh, if Jenny's looking for jobs, um, possibly if she's looking for a job at a state shop, that might be okay, but even then I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, so even though Jenny likes skating, um, she might want to have this email if she wants to, you know, email her friends or if she wants to visit a skating forum, maybe, um, or something like that, that would be a fine email for that. But for a job, you want something more professional. We usually recommend just using your name. So she's going to try jqpublic at gmail.com because that's her initials and then public is her last name, of course. So now we need to figure out a password. And a password is, like I said, it's like a key uh, to the door, but where a key is fairly secure because you know how many copies there are and generally where they are. If you don't, then you get the locker changed, right? Um, so a key is secure because there's a limited number of keys to the lock. But a password is a little different because it's just information. So if someone if, if someone overhears you typing your password, if someone sees you typing it in, or if they just guess it, um, then they can get into your account. Because Google doesn't know that it's you unless you type in the right username and password. And the same way, they don't know it's not you unless you don't type in the right username and password. Um, so what we say at the Career Center is you want your password to be something that's easy for you to remember and hard for others to guess. Uh, you can write it down. Uh, I try not to because, again, if, if someone comes across it, then they suddenly have the password and then they can sign into all of your accounts, right? Um, but so something easy to remember and hard to guess. Um, 
and that's whatever it looks like to you. Uh, if you'd like to, you can see some uh, other tips on passwords. If you Google for password tips or coming up with passwords, stuff like that, there's a whole lot of different ways that people use to uh, generate and to remember passwords. Um, but we're just gonna—I'm just gonna show you how to use the password on this. So, first thing first, if you type, if you click on this little eyeball right here, you can see the password as you type it, um, which might be handy if, if you want to make sure you're typing it in right. But that's also why they have this confirm box here because they want to make sure that you type it in twice the same way because that's if you do, if if you get it wrong if you had a typo or something, then you're gonna be locked out of your account because Google doesn't know what you meant. Right. In the same way, the password is um, uh, it needs to be typed in exactly as you type it in every time. OK. Um, and also a lot of websites have this, too. You see down here, use eight or more characters with a mix of letters, numbers and symbols. Um, so that's just one of those things you want to make sure to use all the different um, you want to make sure and, and, and hit all those different uh, requirements for the password. Um, so yeah, so eight or more characters, the mix of letters, that's A through Z, numbers, that's zero through nine, and symbols is any other key on your keyboard that isn't a letter or number. You can also hit the shift key and uh, choose one of those symbols above the numbers as well. Um, so I'm just going to type in our password, uh, and obviously uh, we can't let you see it, um, but it is a mix of letters and numbers and let's hit next okay so this happens fairly often especially if you have a more common name uh, it looks like our username is taken so we have to try another so let's see you can also try we're gonna try Jenny uh, Q public let's try that everything else is still signed in so that's or everything else is still filled out so that's good so we can hit next again that one's also taken Let's see, so you see they, they're kind of starting to give us some suggestions down here, so let's try adding a number. Now, you might think a good number to add would be your birth year, um, but the thing about that is, is that it can be used in what's called age discrimination. Um, people, once they pass 50, um, see their higher ability just drop, which isn't fair, um, but it, it is what it is. And even though Jenny Public was born in 1993, uh, it'll be fine for a while, but at some point that will be, uh, she'd have to change her, her email account, uh, basically have to move. Um, so she doesn't want to do that either. So other things you can do, you can try using your uh, birth month and day, uh, or you can try just doing a number that's, that's, that you like. Um, but I think for Jenny, we're going to do 7-4 because her birthday is uh, July the 4th. So here we go. All right, hit next. All right, and that one took, so that's good. Um, now, for us, uh, we're not going to fill out this phone number and recovery email address um, because we're just showing you how to do this, but I would highly, highly recommend filling out your phone number and recovery email address if you have another email because, um, as you can see, it says, we'll use your number for account security. Um, basically, if you do end up forgetting your password, or get locked out of your account some other way. Um, Google can use your phone number. They can send you a text or a notification um, and then make sure that it's you so that then you can recover your account. You can sign back in basically. Um, so I would highly recommend adding in your phone number here. Or again, if you have another email address, uh, I would put it there as well. Um, just, just to make that easier if you end up forgetting your password, make it easier for you to get back into your account. So that's what I would recommend. Um, but other than that, let's see, we can just put in our birthday, July the 4th, let's see, and she was born in 1993. And so you can put female, male, rather not say, they have a custom box too for gender. Uh, Jenny, rather not say, we don't want Google to have that information, but fill that out, out however you feel. And then we're just gonna hit next. And let's see, our browser is asking us if we want to remember the password. I'm going to hit never, but that's up to you too. And now, let's see, now this is just the terms and the privacy policy. Um, I would recommend you reading this 
Um, it basically says the kind of data they're going to collect on you, um, what kind of stuff you can and cannot do with their service. Uh, I think they, I'm assuming this terms of service probably includes something like, you know, don't do anything illegal with your Gmail account, stuff like that. Privacy policy is going to be things like, uh, you know, the kind of data they collect, what kind, what they do with the data, um, what you can do with the data, all that kind of stuff. Uh, just read through it and make sure you're okay with it before you hit I agree. Um, if you're not okay with it, that's fine. You can hit cancel. But since we're showing you how to do it, we're going to click I agree. And that should be it. Let's see. It's working in the background. Okay, and this is our Gmail account. So good job, you just created an email account with Gmail. Uh, let's see, apparently they now have video chats in Gmail, so that's one of the extra features. Um, so this is your inbox. I'll just take you on a quick little tour. This is your inbox here. This is when if somebody sends you an email address, um, it will show up in your inbox. And then email will show up here, right? And then you can open it up and look at it. You can read it. You can respond to it, do whatever. Um, there's also some other stuff here. I'm really only going to show you one other folder, and that is spam. Okay, so spam is... Um, it's like spam mail. It's like those annoying mailers you get whenever you uh, go to your mailbox, you know, and they have like coupons for stuff that you're never going to buy. Um, basically, that happens with email too, and it happens a lot. Now, Gmail spam filters are really pretty good, so it shouldn't show up too much in your uh, inbox, but what does happen sometimes is someone will send you an email and it'll go to spam even though you want it to look at it. So if somebody says, oh, hey, I sent you an email and you don't see it in your inbox and you don't know where it is, try checking your spam folder. It might be in there. Um, and the other thing, too, with Gmail, this is kind of newish. Uh, another thing is you want to check these tabs as well. So there's primary. That's going to be most of your messages. Um, but there's also social, which you can see Facebook's already sent you one, and uh, also this. And there's promotions as well. Um, so they might end up in these tabs too. Uh, that's a feature I personally am not a big fan of with Gmail. I turn that off. Um, but just so you know, if, if you don't want to turn that off, it, they're there as well. Even if you accidentally delete an email, uh, you can actually uh, go down to trash and a, your deleted conversations will show up in trash. So it's not forever deleted um, unless you delete it from here. And then, I mean, you can like, Delete it forever if you want to, um, but it's it's it takes a few steps. So, yeah, so that's basically email. If you have any other questions um, about it, you can always come in and see us at the Career Center. We're at the bottom of the stairs at the main library. Uh, you can also give us a call um, or, yeah, look at other videos. You can, um, if you like this one, make sure to like it. If you'd like to see more like it, you can hit subscribe. Um, but other than that, we'll see you around. Uh, and best of luck in your job search. Um, yep, bye.